Well, 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 looks like our current president, Joe Biden, is taking a pounding in the polling. This is from rearclearpolling.com. It's, uh, we'll go through the categories one at a time. President Biden job approval on the economy. Now, when they say minus 18, that's a strong disapproval. That's the average, minus 18. There's some that are minus 9, minus 23. It's, uh, it's incredible. Look at the disapproval. The high end is 61. The low end is 52 with an average of 57.6 disapproval. And frankly, I'm really surprised it's not higher. Let's look at the overall President Biden job approval on the economy disapprove, like I said, almost 58%. It's, uh, it's incredible. And to show you some of the different polls, we'll go through there. I'll go through them. You can stop the video if you want to see them individually. There's a whole bunch there. Even the pro-Democrat polls are <laughs> all red for Biden, all red for Biden. Now, let's check the foreign policy I mean that's that's even, might even be worse almost 60% disapproval you know all those people that dislike Donald Trump was one single thing you can't avoid Donald Trump the economy was booming it was zooming right along and the world was a lot safer place when Donald Trump was president those are two things they can't talk away. You can call him all the names you want to and go through all the trials that he's going under and the indictments and all of that, but those two facts are irrefutable. Look at the Harvard-Harris poll. Minus 16. Disapproved, 58%. And I'll tell you something, frankly, I'm really, truly surprised that they're not more. Now, that's the foreign policy. Let's take a good look at the inflation. President Biden job approval on inflation. I mean, look at this. Look at this mess. Mess for Biden, that is. 62%, a little bit over, disapprove. Must be about 2 or 3% are undecided. I mean, look at this. This is a bloodbath. Now, I want to say this. Biden's getting pounded for the lousy job that he's doing and some of his policies concerning many things, and we'll get to that as far as crime and immigration goes. It's, um, but the thing is, though, the needle's not moving that much in the general election. Trump is still up in the general election total as a country. And I'm surprised that Trump isn't running away. He's 8, 10, 15 points ahead. There's just some hard-nosed Democrats out there but Trump derangement syndrome that just insists that the earth is flat, that will not vote for Donald Trump under any circumstances. Just shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, you can do that if you want to, if you want to vote for somebody that's going to be bad for the country. But here's the problem. We're all in the same boat with you, and you're putting holes in the boat. Don't do that. Now let's check on crime, another big one. Look at this. It's getting slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered. More than 56% disapprove. And frankly, I'm surprised it's not higher. So, well, President Biden doesn't do the things that all the local district attorneys do in Chicago and New York and L.A. and San Francisco and all around the country in the deep progressive blue cities and states. No, but his policies, his policies are the same. It's, it's just a bloodbath, absolute bloodbath. Now, let's look at the big one here, the big one, immigration. Look at this. We're in the low 30s, high 20s. It's, it's amazing to me. Over 63% on average disapprove of his immigration policies. Well, he doesn't even have an immigration policy, except for the fact letting many as millions as you can so they can later vote. 
illegally, I might add, letting them in. You're saying, well, many of them are turning themselves in, John. Well, because they know they're going to get an appearance ticket five or six years down the road. They can set up and get all kinds of bennies if you have children. It's You're better off being illegal than you are a low-income single person. I mean, let's just tell the truth here. They are here unlawfully. The state in Mexico policy was the best. While you're adjudicating your case, which I think, in my personal opinion, 95% plus don't have a case, they're here for economic reasons, which is not criteria to migrate into the United States. So they turn themselves in. Well, John, it's the same as going through a point of entry. No, it's not. No, it's not at all. And with the state of Mexico policy of Trump, when you apply for asylum, you stayed in Mexico until your court case came up. Not anymore. Now you can, they can fly you all over the country. We'll just saw an article 400,000 plus. I consider them illegal migrants have been flown all over the country at taxpayers' expense by the feds. And, of course, they're pumping in billions of dollars into the nonprofits to help them along. Almost 64% disapprove. That's incredible. We'll go to Ukraine next. A lot smaller. A lot smaller. Just over half disapprove. That's a no-win situation, frankly. Uh, did Biden cause the war? Technically, no. But his policies and his weakness, I think, absolutely did. There's no question. When you're the executive or the head of a very powerful country, the most powerful military in the world, and the largest economy in the world, I might add, and you're seen as weak, senile, stuttering, fumbling, it makes your geopolitical enemies stronger mentally to try things they would normally do, i.e. invade Ukraine. Now let's put the one that's got to be the number one of all. The direction of the country. This is the indicator. This is the indicator. And President Trump having a small lead and a general election poll for the whole country. And at the same time, the country's on the wrong track by over 64% on average. That's two-thirds of the adults poll think the country is going in the wrong direction. But yet, it's a small advantage for Trump nationwide. Some of these Trump derangement syndrome Republicans, I might add, I'll call them undocumented Democrats, and the Democrats had just refused to vote for Trump no matter what. They'd rather see their own country burned to the ground economically and socially and everything else than vote for Donald Trump. Knowing and admitting that two-thirds of them, almost two-thirds, think that the country's going in the wrong direction. It's just incredible to me. I, these numbers are so against each other. Almost two-thirds. I've never seen numbers this high, even from the old Jimmy Carter days. I haven't seen numbers this high about uh, Bush Jr. or Bush Sr. Remember when Bill Clinton ran against Bush Sr., there was a big sign in one of his campaign rooms when he was running for president that they put all over the place. And it said, it's the economy, stupid. Remember that one? And those of you that read about it, if you're not old enough. We're going in the wrong direction by almost two-thirds 25% think we're going in the right direction. Who, who are these mental pygmies? Are they just so brainwashed? And the other thing is, like, Donald Trump is, is not up by much nationwide. He is up. In a ge generic congressional vote, Republicans are up. And the job approval rating of Biden nationwide is almost 15%. The direction of the country is almost 40 It's... It's amazing to me. His numbers are tanking. Now, two things. One, 
Those of us that support Donald Trump and the Republican agenda, do not be complacent. I don't care if these numbers double in Trump's favor. When I ran the local elections here in upstate New York, I remember the first time that I won in 1999, I had the attitude, I'm going to lose by one vote. It was a city council race. I was a no name. Nobody had heard of me at the time. Just a small business owner, a little small convenience store on the north side of Binghamton. And I won by 17 votes against the Republican incumbent. Uh, her and her family, rest, she's rest in peace now. She's passed. But they own a bar and are very popular. And I won by 17 votes the second time I ran against her. You, I always assumed that I was going to lose by one vote. And I knocked on doors right up until the last minute. And I won by 17. You can't let your guard down. You have to assume you're going to lose by one vote. Two, the Republicans need to learn from the Democrats. The Democrats are very good at winning elections. Now, we can talk about how they do it. I'm talking about the legal version. In some states, they have ballot harvesting uh, issues, and some don't. Some allow it, some don't. The Republicans are going to have to learn how to register new voters and bail at harvest legally. It's the way the game is played. And in many, many states, the laws have been changed so the Democrats have a huge advantage. We have to learn from them. Not their policies and not how they think, but learn how they turn out voters. Uh, we call it here in upstate New York, GOTV. That's get out the vote. And especially in low-income areas, only 50% of the registered voters normally vote, a little bit higher in presidential years. But the other thing is only half of the adults eligible to vote in low-income areas are actually registered. So you're looking at less than 25% of the adults that are eligible to vote actually vote. And that's Republicans and Democrats put together. Those numbers are pitiful, absolutely pitiful. I'm hoping that the new leadership of the RNC, and I think the Republican Party where I live in upstate New York is doing okay, considering Lee Zeldin did very well in a gubernatorial race. I think he came within 10, which is a huge deal, nine, I think, in a state like New York. Holchel held on by her teeth. Of course, now she's going wacky, but that's another issue for another time. We have to get people registered, and more importantly, you have to get them to get out and vote. Physically go out and vote, even if you vote early. Make, it, make a pledge to yourself that you will personally either register or bring to vote five individual people. That's not a lot. But the caveat is you tell those five, they have to do it for three others. And those people have to tell for three others, and so on and so on. I don't like doubling a penny. The numbers increase dramatically, quickly. Some races, like I said, my local race was only 17 votes. In fact, there was a city council race last year here in Binghamton that actually tied. And when I used to be a Democrat, I was friends with an individual that was on the Broome County Legislature, and she tied. So we've had two ties here in this county. So it happens locally all the time. Your vote locally means a lot more than you think. And in a presidential year, the down balloting is incredibly important, i.e. what that means is everything besides the presidency. Gubernatorial races, local assembly races, congressional races, right down the line. It brings out a lot more voters than normal. This is a chance, I think, for the Republicans to do really, really well. Should Donald Trump be up by more nationwide against Biden? Yes. But we've got a long ways to go. And I'll tell you the truth, honestly. My gut tells me the fence sitters, the ones that, when you mention Donald Trump, they get that look on their face like somebody's holding a turd under their nose. I have a 
just a gut feeling when they go to vote. They're going to look at Biden. They're going to look at Trump. They're going to be discussing with Biden. They hold their nose at Trump, and they're going to say, ah, to hell with it. Let's give the guy a chance. He did really well last time economically, and they're going to vote for Trump. I, my gut tells me that. But we're going to have to see. But definitely the Republicans and Trump are on the right track. Biden is shooting himself in the foot at every given opportunity. Now he's placating by giving away billions to try to waive student loan debt. Talk about buying votes directly. And he's got dozens of indictments against his political opponent from his DOJ. Let's just tell the truth here. He's the executive. He runs the Department of Justice, period. He could fire Merrick Garland tomorrow. Anybody that can fire you is your boss. Let's just tell the truth. In his immigration policy, his economic policy, borrowing trillions and pumping it in the economy and wondering why inflation is so high. Inflation numbers we haven't seen since Jimmy Carter. When I was a young man, I got married in 1979. Right around then, inflation was through the roof. I remember credit cards were 20, 22, 23% interest. Mortgages were 16, 17%. You think it's high now. Back then it was brutal. And inflation is the most destructive tax on low income and middle class people that ever existed. Worse than any tax increase at the state or federal level. Inflation is so destructive and has destroyed low-income and middle-class people. It's wiped out huge scores of the middle class. And I'm hoping those people will come out and say, you know what, I don't like Donald Trump. I'm going to hold my nose, but I'm going to choose him anyway. Anyway, meanwhile, there you have it. Biden's numbers are tanking. We'll see if they level off, and my gut tells me they're going to get worse. But don't take for granted that Trump's going to win. Assume he's going to lose by one vote. And do what you can. Get as many people registered as you can. You can go to your local board of elections and get blank registration forms. If you know friends, family, co-workers, get them signed up. Get them a ride to the poll, even if you have to do it yourself. Local get-out-the-vote initiatives are incredibly important for the presidency all the way through your local city council and school board. So we'll see what's going to happen. A lot is going to go on between now and the beginning of November. But it looks like it's heading in the right direction. Let's hope it can stay that way. Until the next time, God bless, goodbye, and good luck.